Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Let me know in the comments down below, how do you find this new format? The fact that we're putting a Tour de France specific video out at the end of the day, and we're putting a more generalised cycling news show out in the morning. Would you prefer it all in one big lump, or do you like the fact that we're splitting it up? Are you even watching this because it's being put out in the morning? Leave your comments down below, and also, if you enjoy the video at the end of it, feel free to hit that like button. If you've not enjoyed it, feel free to hit that dislike button. But above all else, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell, okay? Can you do that? If you've not done that, I would really, 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 really appreciate it. If you did, if you have, I love you. Let's get on with the news. First up, so last week we spoke about Tom Dumoulin and the rumours of him moving to this team, that team, any team that'll take him and also the rumours of him not moving anywhere because he's under contract with Sunweb until 2021 or the end of 2021. However, now the news is coming out and the rumours have been speculating that he is actually going to be making a move across to Jumbo Visma. According to La Flamme Rouge 16, after Tuto Bici's transfer rumours around Dumoulin last week, AD also reports a transfer today stating that they have multiple sources. Dumoulin will be bought out of his contract and head to Jumbo Visma. Dumoulin's current contract is till the end of 2021. It appears that people in the comments know more than I do. Check this comment out. Dan Meals, Dan Mails, sorry Dan. Dumoulin is going to Jumbo Visma for 100%. Imagine this team, Dumoulin, Rodelidge, Kuisweig, Bennett, Gunnarvegen, Turnison, Martin, Van Aert. Imagine that team. I'm predicting this now, Jumbo Visma, they're gonna win the Tour de France next year. I don't know who with, but one of those riders are gonna win it. I think that will be a very smart move as well from Dumoulin. It's gonna allow him to have free reign as being the team leader. Although he's getting that at Sunweb, it does appear that there's some sort of friction between him and the bosses. And there's no way you can win a Grand Tour when there's that amount of friction within the team. You need a team that is fully behind you, right from the top, right to the bottom. And if he's not getting that at Sunweb, it's very unlikely that he's ever gonna actually take that Tour de France victory that he, that he desires so much. If he can move to Jumbo, as long as he doesn't stand on anybody's toes there, like Kuzvaik or Rodlich, I don't think there's going to be an issue. If, if they can all work together as a solid unit in the Tour de France, they could be unbeatable. That'll be so interesting to see. I'm looking forward to that one. But also, this is all just speculation and rumour. Sources have said it, but until it actually happens, anything could happen. He could stay at Sunweb and see out his contract, or he could get paid out of that contract and move across to another team. So we'll have to wait and see. But you know, as soon as that happens, you're gonna probably hear about it third hand from your boy Pritch. Also in the news, we've got some great little videos coming out of Twitter. First up is Matt Stevens and a little behind the scenes look at his latest video coming out for Sigma Sport. Breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. Coffee and a pan of chocolate. Oh, and a Cervelo S5. Hello, is that a room service? Oh yeah, hi, it's uh, Mrs. Stevens in room 44. Yeah, I'd like to order uh, some bits and bobs, please. Yeah, a, a coffee, black, and a pan of chocolate and a Cervelo S5. Lovely. Thanks so much indeed. Ciao, 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 ciao. quick. Oh. Also on Twitter, check out this tweet from a Norwegian cyclist. What the hell? Only in Norway. Crying laughing emoji. Ah. Uh -huh. Emoji. Today I was in a breakaway with a guy who DNF'd yesterday's stage. He was allowed to race today by the commissaire. Then he wasn't allowed to pull in the breakaway by the commissaire. In the middle he attacked with his teammate on his wheel and made a split. What the fudge. And then next up this video out of Trinidad. First up, l listen to the commentator. This is straight out of some South American football commentator's book. But also, can you spot the, the glaring mistake the race organizers made when they planned this route? 
Les euh, spectateurs qui commencent à applaudir, attention Le sprint est lancé Le sprint est lancé Le sprint est lancé Oh là là, Michael Stanis Aïe Oh là là, il y a une chute 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 Oh là 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 Sur cette ligne d'arrivée Il y a une chute sur cette ligne d'arrivée Who thought that would be a good idea Who thought in their right mind it would be a good idea to put a finish line right on a speed hump? I mean, come on. Also, it's that time of the year again. It's the 2019 Awkward Handshake of the Year Award. And it goes to this guy. And that'll segue us nicely into the Giro Rosa. And can you believe it, for the second day running, somebody decides to celebrate early and loses the race. To the line for the second day in a row, the rider that thought they'd got it didn't. And Borghese stole it on the line from Qualiotto. The gap minute, but it all came down to the throw to the line as Leticia Borghese took the biggest victory of her career by centimetres. Now, to be fair, Lucy Kennedy's mistake on stage three was almost acceptable. It was an uphill finish. She turned around. She did look like she had a big enough gap. Didn't realise how fast Mariana Voss was coming, so decided to celebrate. Still should never have happened. But to try and celebrate when you're not even across the line and you can see the rider next to you, you've got all that time after that finish line to do whatever celebration you want. Both hands in the air, one hand in the air, throw your helmet up in the air, smash your glasses, do whatever you want, pick your bike up over your head, do anything. But just get to the finish line first. Schoolboy error. <sighs> Sorry. Schoolgirl error right there. So what should have been a stage victory for Nadia Quagliata? was actually a stage win for Borghese. In third place was Chiara Perini, and Mariana Voss took the sprint from the main peloton. And as the ladies head to stage five, Cassia Nuvadoma is still in the lead, 20 seconds up the road from Ludwig. Mariana Voss is in third position, maintaining that points lead jersey. And it's still all to play for. Stage five was gonna head up the Paso Gavia, but that obviously got canceled because of landslides. So the organizers have rebooted the stage. It's slightly less in terms of climbing meters. They're going up to about an altitude of 1900 as opposed to 2200, 2300. So there's gonna be a massive shakeup in GC at the Giro Rosa, and I'll bring you all the latest news from that. So last week in the news, I reported about Sufferfest now making specific e-racing training programs. A week later, Wahoo have purchased Sufferfest. In the report from Cycling Weekly, Wahoo acquires the Sufferfest to complete training ecosystem. Wahoo have announced that it will acquire the Sufferfest, the home training brand founded by David McQuillan in 2008. Connected fitness device leader Wahoo is responsible for the Element Computer family, as well as the Kicker Turbo Trainers and the Ticker Heart Rate Monitors. Commenting on the announcement, Chip Hawkins CEO said, we are really pleased to bring together the Wahooligan and Sufferlandrian communities. We share a common passion for the performance of endurance athletes and our collective knowledge will provide additional benefits to athletes everywhere. He added, Wahoo remains committed to the growth of the indoor training and fitness sectors and will continue to integrate and collaborate with as many leading software providers as possible. Now, it's no secret that I'm a massive fan of anything when it comes to Wahoo. I think they make brilliant products. I, I love everything about my little Wahoo ecosystem that I've got. Um, however, I'm not a massive fan of the Sufferfest. It's not, I say I'm not a fan. It's never appealed to me. It's not something that I've looked at and thought, I want to get involved in that. Now, I know the Sufferfest has a, has a huge community and a, a really solid community, similar to, you know, Zwift's community. If you're in Zwift, if you're on Zwift, you're in it, you're on it. Same with Sufferfest. And um, how it's going to be integrated with the Wahoo setup, I'm not too sure what they're gonna to do to move the Sufferfest on because there's no there's no two ways about it. It needs it needs to be brought up to speed. It feels like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe this is just my personal opinion. When I see the market, when I look at the market, I think people like Trainer Road and Sufferfest 
have really got to innovate and bring something new to the table to compete with the likes of Zwift. You're getting better training plans, you're getting more specific training plans, and with the Sufferfest, the Sufferfest really goes into um, who you are, what you are, what you're trying to achieve, and spends a lot of time on that uh, consultancy part of, of working out what exactly it is you need to be doing when you come to your training. You know, that's great for a lot of people. However, if you've got a coach and you know what you're training, you're going to head more down the route of potentially trainer road or, or Zwift. With with Zwift, it is such a immersive experience that it's easy to get lost in what you're doing. Whereas with the Sufferfest, you know every second that you're doing it, similar to Trainer Road, exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. And it's much more of a training tool as opposed to a, a community social riding experience like you get with Zwift. But then again, it's just down to personal preference. If you get fired up by that and you really get immersed in that video of whatever you're watching and you're training, then it's gonna work for you, absolutely no doubt about it. For me personally, I don't get enough stimulation out of watching somebody else race to stay motivated on it. I, I need something a little bit more, whether that is trainer road and it's and it's numbers and graphs, or if it's Zwift and not only the social aspect of it so you can get people to train with you, but but also the fact that you're seeing an avatar moving across you know, virtual tarmac. But it'll be interesting to see what comes next from Wahoo. Obviously you've got the full ecosystem with the kicker climb, the kicker and the headwind. But what else are they going to bring to the table? Are they going to be looking into to power meters, a smart bike, uh, brand new computers? I don't know. They've just brought the Roam out, which I absolutely love. I wish I had one. I mean, feel free to send me one Wahoo if you want. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll wear a Wahoo t-shirt every single day of the week if you send me a, a Roam. Next up in the main story, I, I just want to shed some light on this because I just want to open a discussion as well. Do you follow Cameron Jeffers? Are you subscribed to Cameron Jeffers? You know I'm a Cameron Jeffers fanboy. I think if you go back far enough, he actually, um, I don't want to say I started his journey into vlogging, but I was certainly one of the few people he aspired to be like. Turns out he's surpassed me in subs. He's way better at what he does than, than I am. Um, and now I look to him to uh, to get inspiration. But, but what I noticed from this video is the amount of production quality that went into it. He raced at the Beaumont Trophy, uh, which is a race up in the north of England. It was actually used as the national championship last year that Connor Swift won. Uh, and it was just, it's just a great video. It just seems like Cameron took a step back into the olden days and produced a much higher quality um, video than, than he has done in a long time. Not to say that the, the quality hasn't been good, but I'm, I'm talking about production value. All right, check this out. It's race day. Good morning and welcome back to the vlog. Today, guys, today is the Beaumont Trophy. So thankfully for this race, I had Monica uh, who was in the feed zone. So she managed to get a few shots of the race as we came through the feed zone every time. There was 140 riders that took to the start line of the 190 kilometer race, which was hosted in a little village in the Northeast called Stanfordham, around half an hour away from Newcastle. It's refreshing to see that. You, you often forget that, that this isn't his full-time job, that he puts a video out almost every day during the season, how hard must it be to carry on putting videos out day in, day out? I, I just couldn't imagine. I personally couldn't do it. And that's why you see a lot of cyclists. Geraint Thomas, for instance, he was a, a big vlogger. Remember him? Link down in the description. Go and give this video a watch. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Make sure you're telling Pritch sent you. All right? Uh, and just enjoy the, the production value of this video. I think it's a really good video. And it's a good insight into uh, the domestic scene in the UK and also tells the story of how a tractor stopped the race. Now, lastly, before we go on to the comments, we all know that Chris Hoy is a bloody lovely man. Well, if he didn't, he is a bloody lovely man, right? Check this tweet out. Is that Chris Hoy? Yes! <laughs> Do you want to see his video? Hundred Ks for charity. I mean, that is a, a huge challenge. I'm sure you would have achieved it, but 
um, these things happen. So I hope you're not feeling too sorry for yourself. I've popped a little something in the post, which hopefully will put a little smile on your face. Um, and maybe I'll see you at some point when you get back on your feet and hopefully back on two wheels again. So rest up, take care and keep smiling. Amazing. Just like Cav a couple of days ago going to ride with that young lad. That message would have taken Chris Hoy a minute. If that. And imagine how much value that has brought to that young kid. That's going to last a lifetime and it's going to make... I can't, I can't tell you how happy I would have been if one of my heroes ever sent me a video message when I was a kid. It'd just be unbelievable. Could you imagine that? Actually, right, on that subject, let's go back in time. Let's, let's take it way back to when we were all nine years old and iPhones hadn't been invented. If you could have got a video message from anyone in the world when you were nine years old, who would it have been? Leave them down below. Right, comments time. First one up, Gary Street. Pritch, sorry, I am nosy. What is in those drawers behind you? Do tell, please. By the way, Lance may be a cheat, but he was the king of all cheats at the time. We're gonna leave that Lance comment there. We're not gonna talk about that, but what's in here? Well, I'll tell you. In this one, we've got mess. All right, there's a lot of mess in, that's, that's one of those cupboards that you, that you just make a mess. Right, that's the mess cupboard as well. But this is slightly more organized, so we've got um, equipment, audio equipment and GoPro equipment. In here we've got, this is cables, USB, Ethernet cables, uh, charging cables, Wahoo charging cables, things like that. In here I've got my devices, I think that's the best way to describe it. So we've got my Wahoo, heart rate monitor. We've got my Wahoo heart rate monitor. Oh, my Wahoo heart rate monitor feed device. Ah, that's where that is. Ah, I've been bloody looking for that for ages. Perfect. Um, in here, boxes with um, hard drives, webcams, earphones, things like that. And then up here is my um, my playtime cupboard. So I've got my PlayStation, that's PlayStation 2. I've got PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers, and various other controllers in there. Patrick Baker, Chris wearing the Wahoo t-shirt. No mention of Wahoo buying Sufferfest. Too late, already done it. Gazing into my big shiny crystal balls, <laughs> I can see a future where Pritchard does live Sufferfest FTP test and cries like a baby. Wouldn't be the first time I've done a stream and cried like a baby. If you're new to the channel, go back in time, go and watch some streams. Also, streaming. Shall we do that this winter? Leave your comments down below. Man Cave Cycling. So there I was at the water cooler spreading Pritch knowledge as instructed. <laughs> Probably lost my last three friends when I tried to recreate Greg's Willy Wonka section. Oh well. Remember that? Greg Lamont talking about Willy Wonka. I always say if you were, like if you like chocolate, yeah. Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory, this is the Willy Wonka of cycling. Willy Wonka cycling. It's, it's, it's the center of, of cycling, really. Yeah. Right, let's leave it there. Thank you for watching. As ever, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you've not done already, hit that notification bell. We are not going to be spoiling any more Tour de France for you. So no thumbnails will reveal the winner of the Tour de France stage. No titles will reveal the winner of the stage of the Tour de France. So, so don't worry. All right? Do it all. And until tomorrow...